So our programme was primarily online. We had it blended learning, so that a lot of online material week by week. There will be online lectures, some readings, online discussions. We had a channel on Slack so they could collaborate with each other. So this all worked really well. The transition to online was not going to be a problem. The problem was at the end and the beginning of each semester, they would have a full day workshop. This was specifically designed for more collaborative elements. So this would run from nine in the morning till four at night um, and they would work together. They would work at groups of tables. They would collectively try and discuss activities. They would work on post-it notes. They would work on whiteboards. They would present back. The challenge was how do we do that in an online environment? There now follows a ministerial broadcast from the Prime Minister. We all know what happened. Things changed quite considerably and quite quickly. Our lecture theatres went from this to this. So the question for me and for many others is how do we replicate this face-to-face -face workshop in an online environment? The benefits of face-to-face -face are many. We can have activities, we can discuss, we can move around, we can uh, use different materials, we can easily interact in a really social way. And it's really challenging to think about how those sort of things can be replicated in an online environment. So we looked at the many tools, we searched for support, we looked at videos, we looked at advice, we looked at guidance, we looked at the research literature, we looked at theories, we looked at the guidance theories that we'd used for developing the materials to see if they could be of any use. And these readings reminded us that there were some core principles that were really important in effective teaching. Students needed autonomy in terms of the way that they approached the activities. They needed some clear structure in how those activities were guided. They needed opportunities for reflection and they needed some good quality relationships with both staff and other students and these were really important. So the question was how can we think about the technology in relation to these core principles? Yet I still had some niggling concerns that we could use perhaps some fancy technology to help try and replicate some of these features but the worry would be in a workshop that the technology would take over and our support would be about tech support and the students would be uh, uh, str potentially struggle with how to do it rather than the actual learning from the activity and I really didn't want the, the, the technology to dominate so I really just started thinking about how could we do this in a simple way so it shouldn't be all about the technology it should be as simple as writing on paper I had to go back to the basics but then I realised I was focusing on the technology when I should really be focusing on the workshop and the learning outcomes. What was this workshop about? How did it fit with the programme? We had lots of material. The material wasn't a problem. We had some good activities that we've derived over the last five years. They work pretty well. The question was, what were they trying to do and can we do that in an online environment? I realised I had the materials, I had the activities, I just needed to make it personal more than just an online lecture that they could watch. I needed the map that made it simple to navigate their way through. I was suddenly onto something. So I started thinking about the activities and they really involved reading or writing and they were introduced by someone so could we have something where you know the person was there with them while they did the activity but then we had a space to discuss it which we could do quite easily then I started thinking about the technology again and thought wouldn't it be great to just kind of insert something where perhaps it could when they're working on it the person could pop out and uh, present or talk about the activity and then they could work on it sort of like a hologram presenting to them but they, they're separate from that and we could record that and they could be, be there doing their work and we could be discussing or talking about at the very least what we were trying to achieve with those activities. And then I thought, no, it's got to be simple. It's got to, the technology has got to be so simple. And I thought, what is the most simple technology that they have available to them? Like a pad of paper and it's Word. It's been going for years. It actually isn't much different to what it was 20 years ago. I've never had a student talk to me about how to deal with Word. I thought, couldn't we just do this in Word? It wouldn't be very fancy, but maybe if we could just have a Word document that they worked on and then perhaps embed a video within that. Then it hit me. Producing a Word document is pretty simple. Producing the video is pretty simple. We do it all the time on the master's program. And we can 
put those two things together, students know how to do both of those things. They don't need to go outside of the document. And actually, they can work in the document. I can introduce it. It can be a bit like a hologram from Star Wars, uh, or not really. And they can then work on the document. And then we can go back to those online spaces to discuss those activities. And we can talk about it. And we can have a chat function. And then I reflected and thought, well, maybe my workshops really aren't always that good. Maybe this is an opportunity to do it better. Maybe if I could actually do this, it might work really well. So I thought it was simple, straightforward and supportive. But the most important thing is, what did the students think? We're just going to talk a bit about your experience of the um, the workshop that we took from uh, a full day workshop and translated it into an online version which involved a workbook um, in Word which had some embedded videos and some scheduled uh, online chats. Now I am aware from our conversation you've also had, um, you did some unscheduled chats with your own cohort of students and so we'll just we'll try and pick up a couple of those things. So just a, a, a general question, overall what was your experience of the workshop? Uh, I found the workshop actually to be a lot better than I had originally and, and expected it to be. Um, the structure was really useful to have had that Word document. It was very user friendly, having the videos embedded in there meant that we didn't have to go between lots of different links. Um, and it really worked well having the short videos followed by some reflection time and questions and um, we worked really well as a group. There were three or four of us dotting in between a zo a, from a Zoom workshop sort of throughout the day. So what we were able to do was watch the videos, reflect on the questions, and then we had a little discussion group about it where we were able to share our own experiences. And that was really useful in being able to fill in the workbook as well. Absolutely. I enjoyed the online session because I don't get distracted by you know the group cohesion and people saying what and trying to fit in and all that kind of stuff that you have to worry about when you're in seminars or am I talking too much, am I not talking, is this person discussing, should I put my opinion forward but no it kind of allowed you to do that and make those opinions and then obviously you got the collaborate session actually having the time to formulate what you're going to say before you're actually going to say it kind of helped me um, because sometimes in group sessions you know I'll just sit there and be a bit more quiet and won't voice an opinion just because someone else is just talking or you don't have the time but with a collaborative session it kind of allows you to do that. I think that the little video really added to it actually and that was something that stood out right away because the videos we normally have are sort of talked over presentations um, and just adding that little talking head actually personalized it a lot more um, and it kind of made you feel that you were being engaged with more than a talking presentation um, or more than without yeah a talking presentation without someone there um, and I also think the shortness of it was really useful because it meant you could do everything in bite-sized chunks take on the information and then reflect and act on it Okay, so um, what was really useful was normally in a workshop, we'll sit there, the facilitator will ask a, discuss, uh, ask a question, we'll all discuss that and then one person will end up doing all the writing and feeding back. Whereas the way this worked, in order to keep the information, it forced everyone to write down and I think that writing is key because we all know that writing is fundamental actually to getting stuff in your memory and it also helped you to reflect a lot more. Um, the other thing that we were doing, as well as having those sort of general discussions, is we actually had the room open. So whilst we were working through our own workbooks, you know, you'd, sometimes you'd sort of ask a question as if someone was in the room with you. And that was really useful to be able to do that as well. Because I think what it did do is it gave us a bit more autonomy. And with that autonomy, it actually put more emphasis on us doing the work because I think sometimes when you're in a face-to-face -face environment you can sort of sit back and try and just take things on send rather than actively engaging in the learning and it made it very active learning. You guys managed it really well I didn't seem bothered you know it's a word document it's pretty easy we work on those all the time. 